Happy Monday, or Tuesday, or whatever day it is that you get that file. You know, the big data file where you have to insert some rows, maybe hide some columns, change some fonts, and maybe even some cell formats. Maybe a chart, or I don't know, a pivot table. In short, get the file ready for either analysis or for presentation. Oh, and did I mention this happens every Tuesday? Maybe for months, or maybe even longer. Well, if you have this or other repetitive tasks to do in Excel, then why not automate? In this video, I'm going to show you how to record and use macros and take those tedious manual tasks in Excel and reduce them to their simplest form. I'll show you a couple of cool ways to run your macros, and I'll be back at the end of the video to show you how to share your macros with others in your organization. So if you've got a couple of minutes, stick around and let me show you how to harness the power of macros and get done sooner in Microsoft Excel. The developer ribbon is defaulted to off on most Excel programs, so you'll need to activate that first before starting our macro exercise. To activate the developer ribbon, just move up to any of the ribbon tabs at the top of the screen and right click. Choose customize the ribbon. And when the dialog box appears on the right side, you'll see several of the ribbons that are either turned on or off. So if you move down to the near bottom of the screen, you'll see developer and just click and place a check. Select OK. And now the developer ribbon is active at the top of the screen and you can create your macro. So let's take a look at that ribbon. On the developer ribbon, you'll see the icons that allow you to view your macros, either the uh, recorded code or the actual macro itself. You can also record macros from this section on the left of the screen. Towards the middle, you'll see an important one, which we'll get to later, insert. And when you click insert, you're then presented with a list of options. These are ways to run the macro after you've recorded it and will focus mainly on the form controls at the top of, of that selection. So let's record that macro. If we focus on the top left of the screen, you'll see two buttons, one allowing you to record the macro and a second use relative reference, which allows you to record the macro using a relative starting point. To start recording the macro, we'll select the record macro button. And in the dialog box that opens up in the center of the screen, we can then name our macro. You can use pretty much any name. You'll just need to use underscores if it's more than one word. You can also assign a keyboard shortcut to your macro, but remember, a lot of the keyboard shortcuts are already spoken for. So if you'd like to widen your selection, just add the shift key and then type your keyboard shortcut. This will expand the range and you can run any macro just by holding the control and shift key, then tapping the letter that you've selected. Macros can also be stored in either this workbook if the macro is essential to operating the workbook no matter who opens it, or they can be stored in a personal macro workbook if it is a macro that will be used on different files from the same computer on a regular basis. A description can also be added to the macro so that anyone who edits the macro later can see any notes that you've left. This is also helpful when sharing the macro, which we'll show at the end of the video.
You can use buttons to run or execute your macros by going to the developer ribbon again and then moving to that insert command that we saw earlier in the video. When I click insert, it'll show two sections, form controls and ActiveX. We'll be working with the ones from the form controls menu. In this example, we'll be using a button to run the macro, so I'll just select the button from the forms control group, move out to the screen, and either click and drag or just click. And a dialog box is provided for me showing the name of any macros that I've created. To assign my macro to that button, I just select the macro and then click OK. The button is now created and I can change text or format the button by just clicking on the button while it's in this editing state. If the button is active, you can get back into the editing state by simply right clicking on the button and then selecting the text. I can also change the properties and text colors or font of the button simply by right clicking on the edge of the button while it's in edit mode and then selecting format control. As long as I select the edge of the button then the control group here is pretty extensive and I can change everything from fonts to the size of the button to other properties including whether the button moves or sizes with the cells and or rows and columns. Macros that are stored in your personal macro workbook can also be run from menu commands. And to accomplish this, just right click any one of the ribbon tabs at the top and then select Customize the Ribbon. When the dialog box appears, you can then add a new tab simply by selecting where you'd like to see the tab and then selecting New Tab here at the bottom. This creates a new tab and you can even create new tab groups to help keep your macros organized. You can find your macro here on the left in the macros section and after selecting macros I can then scroll down until I find my macro, select it, and then add it to the new group in my new tab. The macro icons can even be customized by selecting the macro and then moving here to the bottom to the rename button and then renaming the macro or selecting a new icon. Once you select OK, your new tab is available at the top as well as your new tab group and any macros that you've added to that group. Now that you've seen how to record and use macros, it's time to get creative and find places in your Excel Workday where you can use them. I mentioned at the beginning that I'd be back and show you how to share all this automation with everyone you know, or, well, maybe your coworkers. So, to share your macros, move to the top left corner of the screen and select the Visual Basic command. This will take you into the Visual Basic Editor where you can view or edit macros. All macros are stored in modules on the left hand side in the Project Explorer. Once you've expanded that folder you'll see the module which contains your macro and to verify it just double click. The text of the macro will appear on the right side of the screen. To export the file, just right click the module, then choose export file. Select your location, and you can either rename the module, don't forget the underscores, or just click save. After storing the module in a location that can be shared by others. To import the file, just select the name of the project or Excel file that you'd like to import the macro into, 
then select file and then import file. They'll just need to locate the file. And now the file is important. I hope you found this look at macros to be a helpful addition to your growing Excel skills. And I hope that you'll join me for our next video. And until then, thanks for joining me for this video. And I'm Wayne.